Okay, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. So, uh, let's begin our class with Umur Kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay, so before uh, we continue our lecture for today, uh, we like to ask you, have you uh, give your name for quiz kimia uh, to your, supposedly your tutorial uh, lecturer uh, supposedly to col collect your name. But tadi saya tengok um, dalam apa tu, uh, Excel file tu, uh, S37 and S38 belum ada. Dah bagi nama ke? Dah eh? Ah, okay. So, kalau ikutkan deadline dia hari ni, before 5. Okay, so. We will start with uh, topic 2 first. Okay. Uh, ni saya memang tak berapa ingat. Uh, have you discussed this one, anomalies in the first IE? Kita dah discuss ke belum ini? Dah eh? Okay. So checkpoint belum eh? Checkpoint 21. Saya rasa macam belum tapi saya tak tahu. Saya ingat lah sebab saya ada tiga lecture. Tiga-tiga berhenti dekat-dekat uh, tapi tak sama. Yang ni kita dah discuss belum? Dah. Ha? Sorry? Dah. Uh, Madam dah. Okay. Ni dah. Ni pun dah. Oh tak apalah. Saya pergi je balik uh, checkpoint ni. Saya maybe saya nak mungkin hari tu agak laju. So saya pergi balik sebab soalan macam ni selalu jugalah ditanya eh. Okay. Saya saya buka full ni nampak eh. Sebab saya, saya saya tak nampak screen lain tau. So nampak powerpoint je. Kalau terpotong ke apa cakap eh. Okay eh. Boleh nampak eh. Nampak. Ah, okay. Thank you. Okay, so saya explain baliklah. Let's see lah, if you have a question like this because um, uh, soalan uh, ionization energy ni suka bagi dalam bentuk macam ni tau. So ada you kena plot ataupun you kena fahamkan table untuk keluarkan sometimes they ask for uh, electron electron configuration, sometimes they ask for um, dia tu uh, group berapa, kita boleh boleh tahu dia punya valence electron. Okay. So let's see if you got this uh, kind of question, okay. The first IE, maknanya yang ni dia mention about first IE, meaning that uh, they want to remove uh, one electron uh, from the uh, gases atom. Maksudnya daripada original dia atom, they want to remove one electron. So ni first IE eh. With consecutive atomic numbers, meaning that atomic numbers yang berturutan. Maknanya kalau lah dia start daripada 8, dia akan berturutan lah uh, 8, 9, 10, dia tak akan lupa 4. Ha, ini sebenarnya ini keyword juga eh. Okay, below 20. Of course maksudnya uh, uh, bawah daripada calcium lah. Uh, calcium is 20 maknanya calcium dan ke bawah. Dia tak akan masuk sampai uh, D orbital. Okay, so uh, first, uh, dia bagi ni plot a graph of first IE against element. Meaning that you nak kena buat graph. Okay, IE mesti kat sini lah eh. First IE value dia. Uh, so, ini element you. So, according to this, kalau you tengok eh. Dia sebenarnya uh, daripada from P kita tak tahulah this is Y. Okay, from Q until X. If you can see this. 
is actually a trend in order of increasing ie the increase right okay and you tengok balik satu-satu from q r s t u v w x ada juga yang tak increase whereby kat mana yang dia decrease sebenarnya kalau kita nak tengok in details kalau tengok between r and s is actually ada turun sikit 900 sepatutnya naik kat sini 800 and then again ada satu lagi between u and v this one also uh, your ie decreasing okay ha. so yang ni menunjukkan juga actually apa yang you belajar anomaly sebelum ni where anomaly tu dia ada dua ada dua je kan antara uh, group 2a kepada 3a okay and also group 5a kepada 6a okay so both tak kisahlah ada period apa tapi untuk you punya level ni period 2 and period 3. Dia tak kisahlah ni kita tak tahu dia period berapa tapi maksudnya in between this one. Okay and kita tahu ini consecutive atomic numbers. So kalau you try kira sebenarnya kalau you abaikan P is actually daripada Q sampai X you ada total ada 8. Betul tak? Ada 8 eh. So can I assume here actually you boleh assume lah. Oh sorry. Mana dah tadi? Eh dah. Actually you can assume here that um, sini dah ada, ni, ni maksudnya kita assume ni antara dua ni lah, 2A, 3A, 5A, 6A kan. And kita tahu kalau in, across the period, kalau ikut general trend, IE you increase. Meaning that we can assume this is from group 1A, so this is 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A and 8A. Okay, so kalau you tengok kat sini, maksudnya betul tak? Dua dengan tiga, betul lah ada anomalies kan? Anomalies kat sini maksudnya sepatutnya increase but then kat sini decrease. And then 5A and 6A kat sini, sepatutnya increase but dia ada juga menurun. So anomalies kat sini. So maknanya kita dah tahulah dia ikut turutan macam ni. Okay, so the first thing first, fahamkan dulu table ni. Okay, plot a graph of first IE <coughs> against element. So macam saya cakap lah, you plot je lah macam ni, IE versus element. So you akan dapat something like this. So sepatutnya uh, dia have to mention lah, ni tak berapa jelas juga patutnya without Y lah. Uh, sorry. Without P. Sebab kita tak tahu P ni kat mana kan. Okay, so kita akan start macam ni lah. So this is uh, the Y axis, the IE. And then we have the elements, yeah. So Q, R, and then R dengan S ni dia menurun. Uh, T, U, U and V juga menurun. So this one is between group 2A and 3A. 4, this is 5A to 6A. 7 and 8. Okay. And ni bentuk graph lah. So I explain why there are hiccups on the first IE between element R, S and also U, V. Uh, ni tadi according to this lah. Okay, so hiccup dia kat mana? Kat sini, kenapa? So first IE of P, eh sorry, sorry. Element R and U, R and also U are anomalous as the removal of its first electron is from a stable orbital. Ni pun sebenarnya tak berapa jelas. Kalau you ingat balik, kalau 2A is actually, 2A eh, kat sini lah eh, is actually removing from Kita tak tahu dia period berapa kan, let's say lah you buat S je. It's removing from this to uh, fulfill orbital. Okay, fulfill orbital. That's why higher energy uh, is needed. Dia extra, eh? extra energy. Of course dia akan higher daripada yang ni. Tapi dia extra daripada yang ni. Whereby sepatutnya dia akan naik macam ni je. Okay, tapi dia tiba-tiba dia extra naik. Sebab you nak buka daripada fulfill orbital. Okay, as compared to this one, kalau group 3, you ada S, you ada P. Yang ni, yang ni ada satu je. You just nak keluarkan yang ni. Kan? Sama juga for 5A, kalau 5A is actually, dia dah ada ni. Ini memang penuh. Yang ini ada 5. Total dia ada 5. So meaning that, ini dah stable juga. Tapi yang ni kita consider as half field. Orbital. 
Okay, so uh, extra energy lah sebab dia dah, bila dia half fill dia akan more stable. So need more energy to remove one uh, of this electron. Okay, as compared to 6A, so 6A you have the 6 lah kan. Yang ni, lebih baik dia keluarkan yang ni supaya dia dapat lagi stable. So of course yang ni uh, 5A, uh, the IE higher than 6A. Okay. So that's why dia kata from a stable orbital lah. Kalau you cerita lagi details, R is from full field orbital. Okay, while U is from half field orbital. You want to remove electron from half field and also full field orbital. Okay, yang tu lagi clear lah, lagi jelas eh. Okay, predict the first IE of element P as compared to Q. Okay, bila dia kata konsekutif, maksudnya logiknya, kalau ini dah start dengan A, kalau kita assume this is period 2 for example. So, maksudnya this is from period 1. Period 1 lah, kan? Maksudnya yang penting dia sebelum. Okay, so maknanya kalau dia sebelum sebab dia ada perkataan konsekutif ni lah. So, predict the first IE. Dia tak nak minta uh, value kan? Uh, so, you boleh kata je dia greater lah. The first IE greater than uh, this value 5 to 0 kilo joule per mol. Why? Because P is from another period. Okay. The size P is smaller than Q. Kalau another period of course lah. Maksudnya kalau ni uh, period 1 maknanya dia only 1 S2 for example. Kan? So yang ni 2 S1. Ni 2 S2 for example macam tu lah. So maksudnya kita tahu 1S2 is actually closer to the nucleus. Bila dia closer to the nucleus, maksudnya attraction tu lagi kuat kepada nucleus meaning that higher energy is needed to remove the electron. Okay, so boleh eh. Walaupun saya dah explain itu, maybe saya tak berapa details lah. Hopefully you understand eh on this checkpoint. Okay. Uh, okay, yang ni... Uh, Saya rasa saya dah discuss juga tapi tak apalah kita pergi je lagi. So predict which element will have the higher first IE juga. Okay so between silicon and phosphorus, nitrogen and oxygen. So ini group 5A and 6A. Okay boron and beryllium. This one is group 2A. This one is from group 3A. Okay silicon and phosphorus. This one is from group 4A. Phosphorus is from group 5. Okay, kalau you tengok kat sini, you tengok je. Okay, we, uh, tengok dulu trend dia lah. Across the first, you determine the group apa. Then you ingat balik, the trend is IE across the period increase. Okay, so silicon and phosphorus different period. So uh, maksudnya, uh, sorry, uh, ah yeah. different period maksudnya you compare across the period lah. Okay, yang ni pun semua different period. Okay, so meaning that here, eh sorry, bukan different period. Same period but different group. So you akan ikut trend yang ni. You tak ikut trend yang ni lah. Okay. So yang ni you kita tahu lah. So silicon phosphorus akan period IE increase. So phosphorus uh, will have the higher, higher, higher ni lah. Higher IE lah. Why? Because it have higher effective nuclear charge. We know that across uh, period IE increase because effective nuclear charge increase. Okay, kenapa nak reason lagi because attraction between nucleus and valence electrons are higher lah or stronger eh. Okay, ini trend macam biasa. However, for nitrogen oxygen 5, 6A. Uh, ingat lagi eh, tadi baru sebut tadi 5 and 6A ini adalah anomalies. Ni dua-dua ni eh. Okay. Even though we know that across period patutnya oksigen tinggi. Across the period patutnya boron tinggi tapi dia jadi terbalik. Terbalik because of nitrogen removed from half field orbital. Okay. While uh, beryllium removed from full field orbital. Ah, uh, Kalau nak ingat benda half field full field ni you kena ingat dia punya ni je lah. Ni. Kan Be uh, boron beryllium eh. 2S. Kalau nitrogen. Uh, 2S2, two, two 2P3. Two uh, you ingat ni. This is half fill while for boron this is full fill. Eh, sorry, bukan boron eh, beryllium. 
So explanation dia ni lah. Okay. Dia akan jadi terbalik eh. Okay kalau tak clear you boleh interrupt je eh. Unmute. Okay. Now we look at this checkpoint. Saya tak ingat hari tu saya ada susun-susun juga checkpoint ni. Okay kalau uh, saya dah tersusun tu saya dah lupa. I buka checkpoint yang ni lah yang ada gambar graph ni. First thing first. Saya nak awak delete dulu elemen yang kat bawah ni. Okay. Uh, dia jadi confusing. Sebabnya ni sebenarnya graph daripada yang sebelum ni. Graph yang ni. Kan elemen ni. So sebenarnya benda tu tak pakai. Okay. Uh, so abaikan lah eh. Okay. So dia bagi a few uh, elements ni. Tapi dia labelkan A sampai E saja. Okay. Jawab ikut soalan lah. Okay. Kalau dapat soalan macam ni sama juga. Uh, okay, kita nak you awak, saya nak awak betul-betul fahamkan dulu graf ni. Maksudnya kat sini ni IE and dia kata first IE uh, versus element. Okay, macam graf tadi lah. Ayu tengok ada yang increase, jadi ada yang sudden decrease ni. Apa maksud dia kat sini, lepas tu increase balik. Okay, dia kata the graph shows that the trend of the first IE of some elements in period 2 and period 3. So meaning that you boleh nampak kat sini sebenarnya kita ada dua period dalam satu graf. Okay. Remember uh, lagi kecil period tu. Okay. Smaller smaller the period meaning that smaller smaller apa? Smaller end right? Smaller end. Bila smaller end maksudnya dia close to nucleus. Nucleus. Sini aja ni. Okay. Close to nucleus. Meaning that your IE apa? Higher or lower? Higher lah kan? Lagi kuat dengan nucleus lagi tinggi. So kalau you nampak awak tengok je dulu kat sini sebab dia dah kata period 2 and period 3. Awak tengok pula graf ni jadi buat ada sudden drop kat sini. So kita boleh tahu ya. Kita boleh assume now here yeah, this is actually different period than this one. Okay, whereby bila you compare smaller period which is smaller n, higher IE. Okay, higher IE. So we can assume that this is from period 2 while this is from period 3. Sebab ada perbezaan macam ni, sangat jauh. Okay, ah, uh, so faham eh? Lepas tu dia kata kat sini consecutive juga atomic number. Maksudnya dia akan ikut turutan. Okay. Cuba faham ke? Nak kena fahamkan ni dulu. Okay. Okay. Now answer this question. Choose one element that has the tendency to form an ion with charge negative one. Okay. So kita tengok balik. Kalau you uh, nak refer balik. Apa beza dengan graf yang sebelum ni. Graf yang sebelum ni dia menaik ada turutan kan. Maksudnya daripada 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 4A, 5, 6, 7, 8. Kita tahu daripada ujung tu ujung tu 8 kan. Daripada in, uh, not including di uh, transition element lah. Okay. Kalau tengok balik graf yang ni adakah ada 8? Tak cukup lapan eh. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, ada lima je. Okay. So nak kira benda macam mana. Kita tahu ini tiba pada sudden drop. Where inilah penentu antara period 2 and period 3. Maknanya ini pembukaan untuk period 3. So meaning that D ni kita boleh assume dia adalah from group 8A. Paling ujung. Okay. Clear eh. Lagi ujung, lagi susah kan nak remove elektron. Dan lepas tu tiba dia sudden drop. Maksudnya ni dah dah uh, petala atau shell yang paling yang luar lagi. Okay. So in this case we know that here D is um, uh, apa tadi? Group 8A ataupun group 18 lah. Okay so you sebab dia kata consecutive you turunkan balik. So this is 7A, this is 6A, this is 5A, this is 4A. Okay. So, so ni memang across the period kita tahulah dia increase kan. Uh, and betul tak kat sini tiba-tiba dia menurun. Uh, awak tengok balik kenapa pula dia menurun kat situ. And kita tengok balik between 5 and 6. 
Betul lah. Dia termasuk dalam anomalous. Kan? Anomalous between 5A kepada 6A. Memang ada anomalous lah kat sini betul tak? Okay. So memang 5A ni pasal dia half field orbital. You nak remove dia. That's why dia lagi tinggi extra daripada yang 6A. Okay. So terbukti lah betul eh. Apa punya kedudukan ni. And then maknanya after D, period 3, logiknya this is 1 lah. Betul tak? Kita buka yang baru kan. So 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A. Again, you tengok pula. Patutnya ikut logik kalau across the period, yang ni kena increase kan tapi dia decrease. So, betul tak 2A, 3A? So tengok balik. Okay, again, this is anomalous. Anomalous eh. So between 2A kepada 3A. So because of this is, uh, ni fulfill. Okay, fulfill orbital. You nak remove electron daripada fulfill orbital. That's why dia ada dia extra tinggi sikit uh, dia punya energy daripada 3A. Okay. Dia bukan sebab 3A ni decrease eh. Dia 2A ni terlebih tinggi. 5A ni terlebih tinggi. Bukan sebab uh, 6A. You explain is because of 5A and 2A. Not because of 6A and 3A. Okay. Clear eh. Okay. Again soalan dia. Choose one element that has the tendency to form an ion with charge negative 1. Negative 1 maksudnya dia nak terima elektron bukan remove. Ini IE kan? IE remove. Now dia nak negative 1 meaning that dia nak terima. So maknanya sini tak ada kan? Ni 5. Ini je lah yang paling susah betul tak? C. Negative 1. For example group 7 ni period 2 is actually fluorine. Okay. So the answer is C lah. Okay. B. Choose element is an atom with half fill p orbital. Ah, tadi kita dah cerita kan. Half fill yang ni kan anomalously is because of half fill right? This one. Dia boleh letak A lah. Jawapan dia. Patutnya ada lagi kat sini. Tapi dia tak label so you tak perlu isi lah. Kalau kat sini dia label F kan. Contohlah dia label ni F. So A and F. Okay clear eh. Is very unreactive. Yang paling tak reaktif apa? Noble gas lah right? So this is D lah. The answer eh. Noble gas. Has anomaly in its first IE. Okay first IE. Anomaly A. Ni tadi. And also 2. Ni. Tapi dia tak ada uh, label kat sini kan? Maknanya ambil A je lah. Kalau kat sini dia ada level something, you level lah like, uh, A and apa kat sini lah. Okay, remember eh, bukan B and A eh. A and this one. 5A, group 5A and 2A eh. Okay, it's a member of group 13. Group 13, period 2 tak ada. Sebab kita start dengan 4. Group 13 is actually 3A right? So, here. E, the answer is E. Ya Allah, terpadam pula. Okay. Boleh eh? So, ya. Ha, E eh. So, jawapan dia tadi C A D A E. C A D A E. Okay. So, ini cara untuk jawab kalau you dapat especially dalam bentuk graf lah. Graf atau table eh. <coughs> Fahamkan betul-betul uh, apa yang dia bagi. Daripada situ keluarkan dulu information dia. Okay. So far? Clear or not clear? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Ajak. Nak pula saya buka pula ni. Tak eh. Okay. So, uh, okay. Ni saya rasa pun dah explain. Tak apalah saya pergi je lah balik eh. Kita recap balik. Okay. So, what is first IE? Actually, uh, when you want to remove one more electron from gases atom. Okay. Bila kita kata second IE, you remove one electron from uh, gases ion. Which is we remove the second electron. Electron yang kedua daripada yang tadi kan. So kalau third IE, we remove the third electron from the gases ion. Okay. So kalau you baca kat sini lah eh. The removal of the third and the successive electron. Maksudnya lagi you nak buang electron makin susah lah. Sebab dah ada greater attraction between Uh, valence electron yang tinggal dengan nucleus. Sebab maksudnya repulsion pun dah kurang. 
So of course greater uh, attraction. Okay. So uh, okay again kat sini contohlah nak bagi nampak dari segi in terms of value kalau awak dapat table lah apa-apa table kan. For example say we have lithium. We know that lithium is from group 1. Dia valence electron ada satu saja. So if you want to remove electron, okay let's say lah 1, 0.52. If you want to remove the second electron, meaning that you want actually to remove the core electron. Sebab okay lithium is actually 1s2, 2s1. Okay kita dah remove dah yang ni. So yang ni. Nak remove pula yang ni. So ini maksudnya you akan remove kat sini. Second. Second IE. You tengok kat sini ada sudden increase daripada 0.5 kepada 7.3. Okay very sudden increase. And then daripada 7 naik ke 11, ah, dia dah start slow lah. Walaupun dia still increase. Okay, across the period, IE still increase. But dia punya increase tu, dia increase, tiba ada naik. Increase lagi ada naik. Ah, macam tu. So yang bila ada naik tu kat situ kita tahu, kita assume you dah nak start buka dia punya core electron. Okay, mungkin nak bagi lagi nampak. Maybe for example, um, Boron lah eh. Okay, boron. Ada tiga. So okay, first buka. Okay, 0.8. And then 2.43, 3.66. Makin lama makin tinggi. But then daripada 3.6 jadi 25.2. So meaning that uh, daripada sini you dah start nak buka core electron. So bila ada yang sudden increase ni, yang macam tangga ni. Okay, kalau you tengok value dia tu. It's actually you boleh daripada value sini saja you boleh determine dia punya valence electron. Okay, bila ada sudden increase maknanya okay kita tahu IE1 hingga IE3 dia ada 3 elektron. Kalau ini, yang ni beryllium dia ada 2 elektron. Just by looking at the uh, apa ionization energy. Okay, so sama lah sampai neon pun up to neon. Of course lah neon dia group 18 kan. Dia sangat tinggi. Even dia tinggi pun dia tengok kat sini. Ha. Uh, group uh, 18 dia tinggi. That, but across uh, bila you nak nak naikkan ni nak buka setiap satu elektron dia akan tinggi dan tinggi up to bila dia nak buka core elektron daripada 23 terus naik 115. So you boleh imagine kat situ sebenarnya kat sini bila you kira okay the total yang tak terlalu tinggi tu adalah 8 electrons meaning that it is re referring to the valence electron. Okay. So ini yang maksudkan dia kat sini eh. The total valence electron can be predicted by having the successive IE. Kena ikut turutan lah. Kalau tak ikut turutan tak boleh lah nak predict kan. Kalau ikut turutan you boleh um, predict valence electron. Okay. Uh, ni example tadi. Beryllium. So kita tahu beryllium from group 2. So logiknya beryllium ni okay dia 1S2, 2S2. Logiknya kalau valence adalah 2 lah. Okay, tapi macam saya cakap, uh, as long as you have enough energy, minimum energy, you can remove all of this electron including the core electron. Okay, core electron ni pun you boleh keluarkan. But then berapa banyak energy yang diperlukan, so that's why bila you tengok kat sini, first dia keluar 0.9, second dia keluar 1.76. Dia naik tapi taklah uh, very drastic. But suddenly dia ada huge jump kat sini from 1.7 to 14.85. So we know that okay now yang ini IE yang ketiga dia nak buka is actually the core electron. So from here we can know that okay this is the value for valence electron. Okay. Ada high jump tu eh. Ataupun a huge difference kat situ. So kita boleh indicate <coughs> dia punya valence lah. Okay. For example yang ni eh. So yang ni rasanya saya dah alihkan dah sikit point ni sebelum ni. Okay. So you boleh tengok je lah eh. So you tengok sini dia kata name the period 3 element with the following IE and write its electron configuration. Awak dapat macam ni. Sometimes sampai dia tak bagi pun uh, predictable. You cannot refer to the predictable. So how to know? You by looking at this. Okay. Uh, kita assume lah this is a successive um, IE eh ikut turutan. First, okay, nampak dia makin menaik, naik, 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 naik. Suddenly between ni, IE5 dengan IE6, dia punya menaik dia tu menaik macam ni. Kan? Yang ni naik tu naik lah, naik sikit, sikit, sikit kan. But here, very huge different. So from here we know that, okay, uh, ni kat sini, this is from core electron. So ini total ada berapa ni? Ada lima. 
So we know that the valence electron ada lima lah. So this is considered as the valence electron. Then dia kata ini from period 3. Okay, valence electron period 3. You can write is electron configuration daripada sini saja. Tu, daripada information ni. So bila dia period 3, maksudnya kita tahu last dia tu adalah 3s2, 3p, 3. Sebab valence dia 5 kan? So this is the valence electron. Dan nak buat apa? Ah sambunglah depan. So maksudnya dia akan jadi 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 6. 3s2, 3p, 3. Okay. So name the ni, name the period 3 element. Macam selama ni saya, saya dah cakap lah. So then hopefully boleh ingat as uh, as much as until uh, element yang ke-20 lah. 20 tu calcium kan. So you try ingat lah eh. Hydrogen 1 and then helium, lithium seterusnya tu eh. At least lah eh. Kalau dia bagi Uh, masih okey. Kalau dia tak bagi, uh, itu yang bahaya je. So, bila you keep top up kan? 15 sebenarnya. So, kat sini 15 is actually <coughs> referring to phosphorus eh. This one, phosphorus. Yang mana ni? Pen saya? Haa ni. Okay. Boleh eh? Faham eh? You tengok je ada huge difference tu. Ah, kat situ perbezaan lah antara between shell uh, with another shell. Meaning that <coughs> this is actually period 3, this is period 2. Ah, macam tu. Dia nak dah buka period 2 eh. <coughs> okay. Boleh eh? Boleh eh so far? Yang ni eh? Okay. Checkpoint 24. Justify which atom between oxygen and sulfur should have a smaller first IE. Oxygen and sulfur are from same or similar group. Okay. Oxygen kat atas, sulfur kat bawah. Which one has have a smaller first IE? Down the group, IE you increase or decrease? Can someone answer? Decrease. Ah, sorry? Decrease. Decrease right? Down the group dia paling senang lah. Dia shell bertambah, uh, dia makin jauh dengan nucleus. Makin jauh dengan nucleus, attraction kurang. So that's why IE tu tak perlu banyak pun IE untuk remove the electron kan. So have the smaller uh, IE. Uh, so of course jawapan dia sulfur lah eh. <coughs> Justify which item should have a higher second IE. Lithium or beryllium. Dia, dia spesifik eh. Second IE. Okay sekejap. Tengok jawapan yang first tu. Yang first ni tadi sulfur should have smaller IE. Okay. In, you explain in terms of shielding lah. Dia nak justify kan. Tadi uh, saya simplify kan tadi eh. Uh, apa? Uh, uh, when you have a location located in the higher period. Okay. So meaning that um, uh, jarak eh. The length from the higher period to the nucleus will become larger meaning that the shielding also become higher. Okay, shielding effect. So the uh, attraction uh, between nucleus and also the valence electron become uh, smaller lah. Okay. Uh, sorry, attraction will become because smaller eh. Bagi uh, apa eh? Weaker. Ah yes, weaker. Itulah saya nak sebut perkataan apa antonym for greater eh. Weaker, weaker. Sorry. Ah, okay. <coughs> okay, untuk second ni tadi. Dia specific eh. Higher second IE. Eh, sorry, which one have higher tapi untuk second IE. Lithium or beryllium. So untuk ni nak bagi lagi nampak. Okay. Sekejap eh. Saya stop kejap eh. Azan. You boleh tengok je dulu jawapan ni. <coughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so kita sambung eh. So, okay, again soalan dia tadi, um, uh, you have to justify, you first kena pilih lah. Which one have higher second IE, lithium or beryllium and justify. So, uh, here we know that lithium uh, is 1S2 to S1 and beryllium have 1S2 to S2. But now they ask for second IE. Okay, not first IE, second IE. Kalau first IE, okay, you can simply remove from this one. Yang ini susahlah nak remove, right? But for second IE, meaning that after remove, uh, dah dah remove yang ni, okay, now tinggal 1S2 saja, which is this one, lithium plus. You nak remove another one electron from 1S2, so now to become lithium 2 plus. Okay, and then beryllium, uh, beryllium, kita dah buang ni satu. Dah buang satu, jadi 1S2 to S1. <coughs> Sorry. 1S2 to S1. So, the here you want to remove this one. Okay, meaning that you boleh nampak. You imagine kat sini, uh, one, lithium plus, dia dah already stable kan? Electron configuration dia dah stable kan macam ni. Kalau 1S2 to S1, to S ni, dia ada satu saja. So, easy to remove this one as compared to remove this one. Okay, so here... Meaning, uh, second IE for lithium plus, okay, is actually, uh, we, we can say that higher than first IE, eh, sorry, than second IE from BE plus. Okay, so that's why kat sini, ini lah tengok sini eh. Uh, it should be easier to remove uh, 2S here, okay, from BE plus as compared to remove 1S here from lithium plus. Okay, so maknanya tadi, ini justification dia lah. Rupanya dah ada jawapan dah kat sini. You need to justify je kenapa uh, higher, eh uh, still kena pilih kan. Okay. We know that lithium is higher lah now. We know that lithium higher for second IE. And justify dia tadi. Uh, again, kalau dia tak ada mention kat sini, you can mention about stability kan. You want to remove uh, electron from uh, more stable electron configuration as compared to be, uh, BE plus. Okay. <coughs> okay. So far clear uh, untuk IE eh. Okay. So now kita masuk pada EA and electron negativity. EA is electron affinity eh. So in this learning objective, should be able to define EA, explain the trend. Again, uh, trend pun, uh, although kita belajar trend across the period down the group but then sebab dia banyak sangat anomalous, dia tak follow sangat trend tu pun tapi uh, at least kita tahulah trend dalam group tu 15 also 18. And then also the trend for electron negativity. So this electron negativity akan, akan dipakai actually dekat dalam chapter 3. 
Okay, ni kita introduce dulu. Nanti chapter 3 kita akan terus pakai for electron negativity. Okay, so what is EA? EA is actually terbalik daripada IE lah. So EA kat sini, dia punya definition dia is energy change. Perubahan energy occurs that when one mole of electron is accepted by one mole of atom in its gases atom to form an ion. Okay. So kalau uh, dia boleh juga ada second EA. Kalau second EA maksudnya accepted by one mole of ion lah. And it still in its gaseous state. Okay. So in this case dia nak terima accept electron. Okay. So X mesti dalam bentuk gaseous state terima electron, receive electron to produce an ion. Okay. The more energy being released which is value to more negative the larger the EA. Okay. Maksudnya kita tahu lagi mudah nak terima elektron adalah group 17, group 16 right. Lagi paling kanan kan. So that value uh, akan jadi lagi tinggi. Uh, value apa? Value value EA tu value dia lagi negatif. Lagi negatif value tu lagi tinggi EA dia. Okay. So in this case if you can see fluorine eh, group 17 value dia negatif 320 for example. We compare to lithium. Lithium negatif juga tapi dia very small negative 61. Even if you compare to neon, neon ni group 18 dia paling kanan. But this is already octet configuration and very stable sampaikan dia jadi positif. Maksudnya lagi positif lagi dia tak suka EA lah. Okay ha, that's why kalau EA ni trend dia you tak boleh include uh, group 18. Group 18 ni dia tersendiri. Dia sangat-sangat tak suka untuk terima elektron lah. Nak buang tu boleh lagi. Dia dah ada you kena extra energy to remove kan. Tadi setiap saat IE. But for EA you dah penuh you nak tambah lagi. You nak you tahu you imagine tambah elektron ni dia akan ada repulsion right. Dia bergaduh lagi kan repulsion. So that's why uh, group 18 normally um, dia punya value positif. Okay in fact even group um, uh, one pun if I'm not mistaken ada juga yang positif tapi very small value lah. Okay sorry bukan group one group two. Group two tengok eh. Ada juga positif. Positif ni maksudnya dia tak favor untuk terima lah. Okay. Uh, I know why. Kenapa group two ni? Sebab dia dah stable arrangement. Kan? 1S2. Macam 2S, 2S2. So dia dah stable. Dia samalah konsep dia. Uh, kalau boleh janganlah remove. Itu tak IE kan? Sebab dia stable kan? Ha, sama kes ni. Kalau boleh you dah stable. Janganlah tambah lagi elektron. Where you nak tambah maksudnya you kena buka lagi orbital baru. Ha, ni maksud dia eh. So paling negatif kalau you tengok memang group 17 lah. And then, and then group 16. Dia negatif. So the highest uh, electron infinity in any period are from halogen. Group 17 eh. Okay. Ha, ni yang saya cakap. If you have the multiple multiple charge and ion. Uh, sama macam you buat IE. Dia punya elektron bertambah lah. Added stepwise. Bertambah. Bertambah. Uh, okay for example oxygen uh, First you can ikut turutan Maksudnya daripada atom Tambah elektron jadi O minus dulu So you dapat value negatif And then second O minus tambah elektron You dapat O to minus Sebab kita tahu oxygen O to minus right Okay then kalau you tengok kat sini Value dia positif Okay dah sudah kata tadi Lagi negatif value uh, EA lagi tinggi kan Okay in this case Second EA is a positive value because an electron approaches an ion with a net charge of negative one. You imagine, O tu dah negatif. You tambah lagi elektron. Sama lah macam you kata, uh, okay, oksigen tu ada ruang kosong tambah elektron. But you tambah elektron meaning that dia akan bergaduh kat situ elektron tu. Akan ada repulsion juga kan. Okay, dah ada. Okay, dah tambah satu. You nak tambah lagi satu. Again, Dah lah uh, dah tambah elektron, ada depression, you nak tambah lagi satu. That's why uh, value tu akan jadi positif. Sebab apa positif? The incoming electron strongly repel by the existing electron. Dia tolak lah kan? Tapi dia tak masukkan juga elektron. Okay. So more energy is needed. Now dia need to absorb energy. Okay. So here and uh, delta H yang kita cerita kat sini dia beza dengan IE tau. IE tu and kita, kita dah cakap more energy is needed tu energy mana? Energy dari luar. More energy is needed to remove electron. 
But here, we are talking about energy dalam atom itself. Dalam uh, element tu. Okay. So here, more energy is needed uh, untuk terima elektron tu. Sebab dah dalam tu dah bergaduh as tu. Okay, kita perlukan source dari luar untuk please give me energy supaya elektron boleh masuk. Asim macam tu lah. Okay, that's why second EA, you dapat positive value eh. Okay. So in general, okay, so atom with low EA where we have more positive value tend to form cat ion. You abaikanlah yang ni eh. Ini nak cerita untuk second EA. Yang ni in general lah. Okay, high EA, more negative value tend to form anion. Okay. Macam saya tunjuk kat sini tadilah. Lagi negatif, lagi kurang negative value tu ataupun lagi uh, positive value tu dia lebih favor untuk form cat ion. Okay. So the trend are not as regular as atomic size. Dia ni lagi lah tak regular eh. Trend dia tak sebab kita kita selalu suruh awak macam at least awak tahu pasal group 2, group 5, group 7. 7A, 5A and 2A lah. Okay, so kalau ikut trend in general lah eh, okay, EA across the period dia akan jadi more negative which is increase lah. Kita tahu lagi negative, EA tu lagi ber, lagi tinggi kan. Maknanya lagi negative from left to right. Okay, uh, maknanya trend dia sebenarnya sama macam IE. Cuma explanation dia lain. IE across the period tinggi sebab lagi tinggi energy nak remove that electron because the effect of nuclear charge tu. In this case, dia, explanation dia tetap lagi tinggi, okay, become more negative because of attraction between nucleus dengan that valence electron uh, tinggi kan, attraction ni tinggi. Bila tinggi, maksudnya uh, nucleus tu uh, energy dia tu cukup untuk, okay, nak nak masuk electron, okay, main masuk. Uh, macam tu. You faham eh, kat situ. Sebab kat sini kita cerita pasal energi dekat dalam elemen. Kalau sebelum ni IE kita cerita pasal energi kat luar. Okay. So um, ini trend across the period lah. Okay. And then group 15 generally lower EA. <coughs> then expected because extra electron must pair in the partially filled orbital. Ah ni macam you belajar sebelum ni IE group 5A. Sama lah group 5A is group 15 kan. So kita tahu group 15 P dia half fill. Half fill orbital. Okay. Sama. Dia maksudnya dia ni dah stable. Kalau IE kita kata tak perlulah nak remove sebab dia dah stable. So of course extra energy is needed to remove the electron. Kalau EA pula uh, dia jadi lower EA. Okay. Dia jadi terbalik eh. Awak kena faham betul-betul eh. Lower EA sebab kalau higher, higher EA maksudnya uh, dia mudah nak terima electron. Now bila lower EA dia tak favor because of dia dah stable. Reason because of dah stable tu betul. Sama. Sama between IE and EA. Sama. But explanation dia yang ini dia lower in EA because dia dah partially or half fill orbital. Because dia dah stable. Sebab if you add one more electron dia akan jadi kurang stable. Okay. So clear eh. So okay. Group 17 pula. Kita tahu group 17 ni adalah yang paling uh, tinggi EA dia. Value EA dia paling tinggi. Meaning that lagi tinggi value EA lagi mudah dia nak terima elektron. Betul lah. Sebab dia, dia perlukan lagi satu je elektron kan. Okay. But down the group generally less negative. Down the group EA you sebenarnya decrease. Okay. Sebenarnya sama je. You explain kalau down the group ni because of the atomic size tu besar. Kenapa atomic size besar? Attraction tu. Apa-apa kan sebenarnya explanation dia mesti ada kaitan dengan attraction. Attraction apa? Attraction nucleus dengan valence elektron tu. So bila attraction tu kurang maksudnya uh, nucleus tu kurang menjaga lah elektron yang kat belakang-belakang tu kan. So bila kurang jaga so macam uh, energy pun tak berapa nak cukup lah untuk dia terima lagi elektron. Dah lah susah nak jaga yang belakang-belakang tu kan. So you imagine lagi susah nak jaga nak terima lagi elektron. Ah susah lah. That's why dia kata less negative. Dia tak favor lah sebenarnya nak terima eh. Okay so clear eh. EA IE ni different in terms of explanation. Okay. Group 2 and 18 generally very low EA. Ha ni tadi saya ada mention sikit kan um, sebab you nak pergi kepada higher energy level. 
Okay, imagine group 2 tadi, 2S, 2, dia dah stable. Kalau you nak tambah lagi electron, meaning that you nak kena buka another orbital. You imagine nak buka another orbital tu maksudnya you perlukan lebih banyak energy kan? Sebab kita tahu uh, 2S kat bawah, 2P kat atas, kat sini. Kena buka energy, kan energy level kan? So kena buka lagi energy lagi tinggi. Uh, petah lagi group 18, dah noble gas. So that's why um, very low EA. In fact, dia bukan low tu sampai dia negatif, sampai dia jadi positive value. Okay, kalau you tengok kat sini. Okay. So ni yang dikata kat sini, all noble gas exist uh, as mono atomic species because they are very unreactive. Dia tak ada tendensi pun nak uh, combine dengan mana-mana atom ke sebab dia sendiri dah stable. Okay. And dia tak reaktif lah. Sebabkan dia stable lah dia jadi tak reaktif. Dia tak perlu, dia tak perlukan pasangan mana-mana eh. Kalau macam fluorin, kita tahu fluorin, fluorin biasa kan jadi CL, CL. Maksudnya dia akan jadi apa? CL2 kan? Dia akan jadi diatomic untuk jadi chlorine gas. Okay. So ni tadi eh. Saya so, mention about the uh, stability eh. Of the noble gas. Eh, sorry. Okay. And then, ah, inilah tadi eh. Thus, group 2 and 18 EA are less negative. In fact, ah, more positive. Less tendency to accept uh, extra electron. Paling tak suka lah eh. Okay. Let's look at this checkpoint. Write equation representing the following process. The third IE of FE. Okay, apa? Equation. Okay. So this equation turn IE for uh, of FE. Maksudnya uh, dia nak sorry IE tiga lah. Okay. Electron affinity of fluorine dia tak mention. Kita assume lah first EA ataupun EA satu. First IE for B. Ha, ni inilah IE IE sorry. IE Satu. Electron affinity for O minus. Meaning that you nak second EA. Okay. Dia nak equation eh. So equation ni senang nak buat mudah juga salah. Okay. Maksud dia kat sini <coughs> third, uh, third uh, jadi mana dia? Third IE untuk FE kan? Kalau third IE, meaning that kita nak IE 3, dia kena start daripada FE 2 plus terus lah. Okay. FE 2 plus ni kena betul. Yang kenapa saya cakap senang nak salah, ramai student lupa letak gas. Sebab ikut balik definition, in it gases ion or gases atom. So mesti ada gas eh. And then IE ni dia buang elektron kan? So elektron kena duduk kat belakang lah, tam plus E. So you get Fe3 plus pun mesti gases. Okay. And then B, uh, EA of fluorine. Dia tak mention so kita assume the first EA lah. So kita start with gases atom. EA terima electron eh. Plus E mesti duduk dekat sebelah kiri. And then jadi, jadi F minus. Okay. So gas. And then C, the first IE of B, boron. So boron, first IE so mak maksudnya kena atom. Pasal I, remove electron, electron mesti kat belakang and then B plus gas. And then D, electron affinity of O minus. Okay, meaning that dia nak second EA eh. So O minus must be, must be dia punya uh, rectangle tu kat sebelah kiri. Sebab dia EA, kena tambah electron plus electron then you will get O2 minus dalam bentuk gas. Okay, clear eh. Kalau dia suruh buat equation, yang penting gas uh, state, physical state tu mesti ada eh. Okay. Ni soalan ke apa? Okay soalan. Check point number six. Question one. Location of the alkaline F metal in the red table is shown below. Okay. Group two A. Explain why the electron affinities are at the positive or small negative value. Ah, gelah yang saya cakap tadi kan. Sebab dia punya S dia dah full fill. Sebab positif kan. Okay so how to explain here. <coughs> Kita ambil yang highlight ni lah eh. Group 2 elements have very low EA because added electron goes into higher energy level or 
sub level which is less stable. Okay. Nak bagi nampak lagi, ha, macam ni lah kat sini kan. You dah stable dah kat sini and as to you tambah lagi elektron meaning that you want to open another orbital, right? Dah ada dua, you tambah lagi satu. So dia tak favor lah. Sebab you nak pergi higher energy level ni, you need more more extra energy. Kan? More energy. So that's why dia kurang lah, less stable lah. Dia dah, dah, dah stable macam ni dah kan? So tak favor sangat lah. Okay, clear eh? Itu keyword lah eh. You boleh buat ayat you sendiri tapi yang penting ada perkataan stability, okay, need to go to higher energy level, something like that lah. Kalau saya, saya prefer you draw lah. So kita nampak juga, ni you faham. Okay, so clear for EA? Any question so far? Tangga apa? 458. Ada soalan? Tak ada eh? Boleh kita sambung? <coughs> Boleh eh? Okay. Okay so kita masuk yang seterusnya. This is the last one. Okay. Electronegativity. Electronegativity ni kita akan pergi very detail sebab sebenarnya uh, benda ni kita akan belajar dalam chapter 3. Sekejap lagi. Okay. So electronegativity is actually um, to measure ability of an atom to attract a bonding pair. Ha, sebab tu saya cakap benda ni kita akan belajar detail dalam chapter 3 which is chemical bonding. Okay. Uh, uh, ni eh, tadi ability of an atom to attract bonding pair of electron in covalent bond. Dalam covalent sajalah. Sharing electron eh. Bukannya dalam ionic. Dalam ionic kita tak tengok sangatlah that value. Sebenarnya boleh pakai tapi kita lebih pada pakai dalam covalent bond. Okay, so trend dia macam mana? Trend dia sama macam you buat untuk EA. Okay, uh, where uh, the EN, uh, kita sebut EN tu electronegativity, eh? negativity. So you tahu lah, eh? EN, EA, electroaffinity. Okay, so EN value decreases down the group. Okay, EN value increases across the period. Okay, trend dia sama eh, macam EA, macam IE sebenarnya sama. Tapi explanation dia kalau kat sini pun you can relate kan down the group principal quantum number n bertambah which is the shell eh. Bila shell you increase, uh, effective nuclear, nuclear charge decreases. Yelah dia makin jauh sebenarnya because of shielding effect tu kan. So attraction tu tak kuat. So that's why the strength to attract electron decreases. Maknanya lagi besar size tu sebab ni kita cerita pasal ability atom tu sendiri nak attract Uh, apa? Atom lain pula. Sebab you nak buat bond sekarang kan. Uh, bila you dengan you punya valence pun dah makin jauh. Tak salah dia kurang lah juga nak attract yang lain. Okay. Sebab jarak pun dah jauh kan. Dengan sendiri punya. Ni pun kau nak attract benda lain kan. Uh, so you imagine macam itulah. So the value uh, will be decreases lah down the group. Okay. So across the period kita boleh really relate, relate with the effective nuclear charge jugalah. Okay, dia increase because of the size to decrease. Size decrease, so attraction, uh, you imagine attraction nucleus dengan maksudnya uh, nucleus ni jaga anak-anak buah dia tu uh, very good. Okay, sebab dia attract kuat kan. So dalam masa sama, okay nak attract yang lain, nak buat bonding. Nak kahwinkan lah macam tu kan. Contoh dia macam nucleus tu parents jaga anak-anak dia. Lepas tu nak kahwinkan dengan, nak kahwinkan anak-anak dia dengan uh, anak orang lain lah macam tu. Contoh, so maknanya Bila bonding dah kuat, so senang lah you nak tarik yang lain kan. Ha, imagine macam tu lah. So that's why uh, bila across the period ni, bila effective nuclear charge increase, attraction to increase, that's why lagi EN value tu lagi tinggi lah. Senang nak attract eh. Okay, so ni tadi ya. Increase, across the period, decrease down the group. And basically, selalunya kita tak tengok sangat lah belah uh, metal sebab kita lebih electronegativity ni tadi saya cakap kita lebih tengok pada covalent bond. So benda yang saya boleh cakap uh, this electronegativity pun kita tak tengok pada group 18. Kita tak tengok. Okay group 18. Kita tengok sampai group 17 saja. Kita tengok pun tak ada group 18 eh. And the highest electronegativity is fluorine. Paling tinggi sebab dia paling kanan 
across the bilik dia paling kanan dan down the group dia paling atas. So that's why dia paling tinggi. Florin eh. The value is 4.0. Okay. So ini kita akan details belajar. You akan belajar lebih detail dalam chapter 3 lah. Uh, nanti dia kata adalah you kena tahu okay F tu paling tinggi. That's why dia lebih electronegative sebab tu dia apa-apa-apa. Itu -apa lah. Okay. Ni at least you tahu dia punya trend dulu eh. Okay, ni value lah tadi kalau you tengok eh. Chlorine is the highest electronegativity. And kita uh, dah simplify kan kat sini. Sebab kita akan pakai this value banyak dekat dalam covalent bond kan. Uh, banyak lah maknanya kita pakai normally yang kat sini saja. Uh, even yang ini pun kita jarang lah pakai sebenarnya. Dia pakai tapi dalam ionic lah. Kalau dalam covalent kita akan selalu usik yang ni. Of course especially this one carbon. Eh. Okay. Consider the following element from the predictable. Rank them in order of increasing electronegativity value. Okay. Now, aluminium is from period 3. Boron is from period 2. Calcium period 3 kan? Eh, sorry, calcium period 4. Carbon is period 3, right? Sorry, period 2. Sorry, period 2. Okay. So, sekarang the different period and different group. Rank them in order of increasing electronegativity value. Again, kita tahu across period, down the group. En, decrease. Ini En, increase. Maksudnya, okay, naik ke atas, En decrease. Paling atas kat sini apa? Florin. So, florin is the highest eh. Maknanya ni paling tinggi eh. Okay. So, apa benda nak isi kat sini? So, biasanya... <coughs> Again, sama je. Kalau you nak buat trend, walau dia, kalau lah dia memang you jumpa dia lain group, dia lain juga uh, period. Yang lain group tu, yang different shell tu, itu yang paling low. The lowest lah. Okay. So, period 4 lah kan. The lowest is period 4. Okay. And then, we have period 3. Sekejap, the boron. Ah uh, yes. Aluminium dulu lah. And then baru boron. Sebab dia paling kiri kan? So, lepas tu barulah si... Ada kurang ke? Okay. Cukup kan? Betul tak? Ah, betul eh? Sama eh? Okay. Kalau you dapat soalan macam ni, green tadi, you tengok dulu. Paling bawah, dia lah dulu. Terutamanya paling kiri. Ah, lepas tu lagi lah dia lah kan. So that's why calcium tu paling bawah. And then aluminium boron dia sama group. Tapi aluminium lagi bawah. That's why dia dia keluar dulu. Then baru boron, baru uh, carbon eh. Okay, clear eh. Oh ya, yeah, habis dah. Okay, any question so far? For electronegativity? Ada soalan tak? Tak ada. Saya rasa tak ada lah eh. So, okay. So, with that, uh, kita habis job chapter 2. Kita akan masuk chapter 3. Uh, okay, so, ni pun satu. Saya pun tak tahulah kenapa. Saya rasa macam lost sangat minggu ni. Saya lupa nak upload uh, segala nota last week. So, saya, ni, saya baru upload tadi kan. So, um, Uh, you all perlukan masa untuk baca dulu atau kita go through sama-sama macam selalu saya buat? Go through sama-sama. Go through sama-sama eh. Okay tak apa. So saya kita take five dulu. Okay. So siapa yang belum download nota boleh download dulu. Dekat Google Classroom dah ada. Pre-recorded video semua dah ada. Tutorial dah ada. So kita break dulu five minit. Sekarang lima tujuh minit. So lima dua belas eh. Kita, kita jumpa balik. Okay kita break dulu sekejap. Okay, nanti saya masuk balik eh. Uh, 5.12 eh.
Okay. So kita continue lah eh. uh, untuk uh, chemical bonding ni untuk yang awal-awal ni masih for me um, masih saya rasa simple lagi lah sebab you ada juga a few part yang you dah belajar. Cuma kita akan pergi in details. Saya boleh cakap lah in this chemical bonding is actually the longest uh, topic and also I would say some students would say that this is the hardest topic uh, dalam semester satu. Okay so but I think kalau you follow slowly uh, apa yang saya explain I hope you can do this lah, okay. So, untuk yang awal-awal ni masih consider still uh, okay. Tak apa jap, saya buka dulu saya punya slide ya. <coughs> okay, boleh nampak eh. Boleh nampak eh, saya buka besar. Boleh. Okay, okay. So, uh, chemical bonding. Okay, we have uh, so far uh, eight subtopics. Eh. First is Lewis dot symbol and then ionic bond, covalent bond. Okay, basically uh, dalam tajuk ni chemical bonding untuk ionic sebenarnya tak banyak pun. Sikit je you akan belajar. The rest adalah daripada 3.3 until 3.7 itu adalah covalent bond. Okay, cuma kita akan start dengan covalent bond daripada Lewis dot symbol. And then uh, you akan start dengan, okay start 3.4 lah I think. Itu dah start benda baru yang you akan belajar. Valence shell electron pair repulsion atau kita panggil the Vesper theory. And then molecular geometry, polarity of the molecules. Uh, dekat polarity ni kita akan belajar lebih pada, uh, kita akan pakai valid value of electron negativity tu. Nak tengok dia polar tak polar kat situ. And then valence bond theory and hybridization, okay. So this 3.6 you akan belajar balik you belajar dekat chapter 2. Yang you akan belajar S, P, RK. You akan belajar balik kat sini. Okay cuma kat sini kita belajar in terms of uh, you combine between sebab ni nama chemical bonding kan. Uh, you combine between atoms, different atoms. Before this you belajar macam dalam satu atom je. Ada S, ada P. Now you belajar you akan gunakan, bila kata valence bond theory, maksudnya sebenarnya you belajar daripada valence elektron dia, you combine. Macam mana you combine, you kata dia share elektron kan? Ha, macam mana dia share in terms of valence bond theory? And then in terms molecular forces, itu pun saya akan tunjuk later lah. And then lastly is metallic bond lah. Okay. So first is Lewis dot symbol, okay. Uh, where kita akan belajar uh, how to write um, structure using, uh, kita, we call it as Lewis structure. According to Lewis dot symbol lah, you have to follow this uh, apa, scientist eh, Lewis eh, J.N. Lewis. <coughs> uh, then, uh, kita buat symbol to achieve the octet configuration. Okay, ni saya tahu you dah belajar lah kat sekolah sebenarnya kan. Okay, kita recap balik. A Lewis electron dot symbol, okay. It's a symbol which the valence electron of an atom or ion are represented by dots. Bila kita kata dots, you kena buat dots. You tak boleh buat X, X macam tu. Okay, macam aluminium ada tiga. You kata uh, tiga, so X. No, dot, mesti dot. Okay, ini sebenarnya syarat dia. And uh, dot tu pun, saya tahu bila kita tulis guna pen, pencil, mata tajam kan. Kan dia buat halus je Nampak macam, ni eh, kotor ke? Apa ke? Ha, kalau nak buat dot kalau saya eh, tolong eh. You nak tunjuk kat saya you punya jawapan, you buat sini. Hmm. Ini dot. Pada saya ini dot. Kalau ini bukan dot. Okay, faham eh? Please eh, uh, make it clearly. Ah, uh, Kalau walaupun you, mungkin saya tak tanda lah. Biasanya lecture tutorial tanda. But then, kita mengalami masalah yang sama. Sometimes kadang kertas awak tu bukanlah bersih sangat. Lepas tu awak scan pula sekarang ni. Tengah zaman-zaman covid ni kena scan pula kertas. Ada macam ternampak tu kan. Kita ingat eh tu dot ke apa lah. Dah salah pula terlebih dot. So at least kalau you buat dot ni clear ni kita tahulah okay aluminium ada tiga. Valence electron. So clear eh make it clear. Jangan dot yang simplify macam ni. Okay. So dot ni satu lagi. Macam mana nak tulis? Sebelum ni banyak sangat isu. Um, macam mana saya nak tulis dot ni kan? Sebab kita tahu total mesti lapan. So rasanya bila lapan tak ada masalah. You akan buat macam ni. Lapan kan? Kembar lah. Dua, empat, enam, lapan. 
Okay, dia isu dia kalau let's say carbon Ada empat, nitrogen ada lima Macam mana nak nak isi? Elektron eh, dots are placed one Sekejap, hide dulu One to each side Until all four sides are occupied Ruangan dia ada empat kan? Aluminium Ada kat sini satu, sini satu, sini satu, sini satu Lepas kita tahu total dia lapan You kena isi berjauhan Isi satu-satu dulu, macam you isi Uh, elektron dalam orbital kan Okay, you isi dulu singly first Haa, lebih kurang lah ni Isi satu-satu Sebab kita tahu elektron The location of the dots is actually Kena to be most far between each other Lagi jauh, lagi bagus Sebab apa? We know that elektrons tend to repel with each other Elektron kan? Negatif dengan negatif Suka repel So kalau boleh dia nak pergi sejauh yang mungkin dia takkan duduk dekat-dekat. So, that's why sebelum ni pernah lah senior you ada. Boleh tak saya tulis macam ni? Tiga. Nak bagi dekat-dekat lu. Okay. So, ini kita tak terima lah kalau dari segi Lewis Electron Dot Symbol eh. You kena buat satu, satu, satu. Macam ni eh. Mana tadi? Ha ni. Satu, satu, satu. Kalau dah penuh barulah you patah balik. Okay. So, clear eh. Ni cara untuk Lewis Dot Symbol eh. Okay, so how about for ion? Okay, ion ni kita tahu macam for example kalau charge dia positif 1, kita hilang satu elektron kan? Macam H, H asal dia ada satu dot. You buang satu, ada ke lagi elektron? Tak adalah. Ha, jangan mandai pula tulis ada plus, lepas ada dot. Tak boleh, itu salah. Okay, lithium. Lithium kita tahu asal dia ada satu elektron. You dah buang satu. Kita buang, kita dot ni kita cerita pasal valence elektron saja eh Kita tak tengok dia punya core elektron Of course lah memang core dia ada 1s2 to s1 Now we only uh, talking about valence Okay, you masuk je chapter 3, you are only talking about valence elektron Remember eh So, when you remove this elektron, dia akan jadi lithium plus Li plus, dah Tak ada dot, kalau ada dot salah Okay, barium 2 plus sebab kita tahu dia akan remove 2 electron So akan jadi macam ni lah B3 plus C4 plus E kalau you remove lah Okay, kalau you add Kalau dia negatif ni eh So kalau you add electron So here kita tahu Okay, for example tadi C Dia ada 4 For example add uh, more gain 4 electron Maksudnya you tambah sini 1, tambah 1, tambah 1 I kacau betul lah ni. Saya memang ada masalah dengan powerpoint ni. Saya dekat pdf okey je tak keluar ni. Sekejap eh. Uh, eh. Okey. Ini ada satu. Okey. Ini ada satu kan. You tambah dah dapat octet. You kena buat bracket. Ini syarat dia. Yang letak charge. Okey. Jadi kalau you perasan bila ada anion dia kena ada Octet except for hydrogen lah Hydrate ion dia jadi duplet saja. Duplet ni dua lah Kadang disebut duet Duet or duplet Okay So dia ada dua saja. The rest mesti octet Mesti ada lapan Including the charge And normally we will include with the square bracket Clear eh Kalau cat ion you tengok kat sini Dia takkan ada dot Sebab dia dah buang So tak adalah Nah, itu ada student tanya, boleh ke saya buat bracket lah macam ni H Sebab dia tak ada elektron, saya buat bracket Saya masih boleh terima lah, okay Tapi jangan ada dot, yang penting jangan ada dot Okay Draw Lewis dot symbol for the following atom or ion Br, group 17 We know that Br, group 17 ada 7 Valence electron, so Boleh lah eh Tahu eh buat macam ni, tak kisahlah dot satu ni kat kiri ke, kat atas ke, kat kanan ke Yang penting ada enam diapit dengan ada satu kat sini eh Two, two, two plus one Okay, when you have BR minus, make sure mesti complete Mass of that with charge negative one Include the square bracket Okay, sebab ni kadang uh, student ambil mudah tapi bila salah, tak ada markah tau. Ha, that's why saya sangat particular lah. Lewis dot, sebab ini adalah cara daripada Lewis. Uh, so you need to follow Lewis punya cara lah. Because we call it as Lewis dot symbol. Then you have to follow Lewis. Kalau you guna cara lain, ah itu cara lain lah. 
Okay, that's why kalau you guna star apa, pangkah cross macam ni pun salah. Sebab nama dia dot. <coughs> okay, clear eh? Okay, saya bagi tahu ni biasanya apa yang saya my experience lah eh, with the previous students ah uh, ni kesalahan yang selalu student buat lah. Okay, hopefully uh, you tak uh, repeat the same mistakes lah. Okay, ha, habis dah triple one. Ha, lebih duduk simbol tu je lah. Okay, clear eh, faham eh. Okay, so now we move to ionic bond. Kita pergi ionic bond dulu eh. Ionic bond tak banyak sangat lah. Okay, here you should be able to explain the formation of ionic bond. Okay, using Lewis symbol. Okay, kita tahu memang ionic bond. Okay, sodium plus Cl. Dapatlah sodium chloride. Ni ionic bond lah kan. Baik, kita nak in terms of Lewis symbol. So, cara you kena pakai Lewis dot symbol eh. And then explain qualitatively, qualitatively the effects of ionic charge and ionic radius on the magnitude of lattice. Kita akan pergi pada lattice energy. <coughs> what is lattice and saya akan explain. And then of course the physical properties of ionic compound lah. Okay. So, Lewis structure for ionic bond. Okay. Kita tahu ionic bond dia akan form bila ada one or more electron transferred from one another to one another. Right. Dia transfer. Dia bukan share, dia transfer. Dia bagi. Maksudnya dalam kes ionic bond ni, satu akan terima, satu baik hati akan sedekah. Okay. Dia ada konsep dia, sedekah kau tak dapat apa-apa. Macam, okay apa, istilah dia nak kahwin. NA dengan CL nak kahwin. Tapi satu ni miskin, tak ada apa-apa. NA ni kaya. So NA akan bagi semua benda dan dia akan kahwin. Kalau Um, covalent bond dia nak kahwin ok tapi dia uh, dia share sama rata so yang A akan bagi sikit, yang B akan bagi sikit dan dia akan share kahwin dia ada satu lagi satu lagi tu actually kita panggil covalent dative, saya rasa ada tapi nantilah saya akan explain lagi in details yang itu case dia, dia share share tapi Um, apa uh, yang satu tu bagi dia kahwin share uh, totally daripada yang satu lagi covalent dative bond entah apalah nanti lah saya explain eh. susah pula saya nak tunjuk kat sini sebab uh, apa covalent dative tu tak ada kat depan mata yang susah nak, nak nak tunjuk tapi yang penting I know lah you understand this uh, ionic bond okay so dia transfer yang penting dia transfer dia bagi apa yang daripada dia Okay, so in this case, selalu yang akan transfer, kita tahulah yang cat ion kan. So dia akan, uh, dia mudah untuk buang elektron. You dah belajar kan dekat chapter tu, you nak keluarkan elektron. So this valence electron from sodium akan masuk kepada Cl. So Cl you imagine kat sini ada, asalnya ada kurang satu untuk dapatkan octet kat sini kan. Okay, so here, okay, ni saya nak betulkan sikit lah. Sebenarnya ni bukan kat sini, eh. nampak macam jauh sangat. Ni okay, sebenarnya kat sini Na plus. Dia dah bagi transfer elektron dapat Na plus. So Cl make sure dia mesti octet dan mesti ada negative charge eh. Okay. So checkpoint tu. Lu use Lewis dot symbol to show formation of MgF2. Okay so you kena keluarkan. So first kali kita tahu yang Mg ni ada dua valence electron. Kalau uh, dia kata to show the formation. Maksudnya you kena tunjuk eh step wise step dia. For example here uh, kita tahu fluorine ni ada dua. So akan ada fluorine kat sini. Fluorine yang pertama dan fluorine yang kedua. Both fluorine ada seven valence electron. So biasanya kita akan lukis clearly lah yang satu ni yang dekat dengan magnesium supaya dia boleh tunjuk dia transfer electron kepada first fluorine and then another one electron will transfer to the second fluorine. Okay, arrow tu kena tunjuk kalau dia kata show formation. Okay, and then to produce, lepas tu dia kata dia buat arrow pula kat sini to produce. So now Mg will become Mg2 plus, dah tak ada apa-apa dah electron kat situ, valence. And F dah jadi octet, okay, with negative charge and also this one also octet fluorine with negative charge. And can be simplified as this one. Maksudnya, uh, sebab F tu ada dua kan, you boleh je buat dia kat sini depan dia ada dua. 
ओके ओके सो ये ये तदी depan ni ada dua. So you boleh simplify kan macam ni untuk dia punya jawapan lah. Kalau ada tiga, dia letak tiga lah. Okay, boleh eh? Clear eh? Saya rasa ni simple lagi lah. Okay, so kita masuk pada lattice. So what is actually lattice energy? Lattice energy is the energy required to separate one mole of ionic solid into gaseous ion. Remember, before this, uh, you belajar ion ionic ni selalunya Electronegativity ke apa kan You belajar to form You combine to form Satu uh, Ionic bond lah Kalau lattice ni terbalik You dah ada satu ionic bond For example sodium chloride tadi You nak separate kan dia Separate kan dia jadi ion Okay so itu lattice energy Macam for example here Sodium chloride solid Separate jadi sodium plus Dia dalam bentuk gases juga Okay, definition ni banyak pakai juga dalam bentuk gases walaupun sodium chloride you solid. Okay, you produce uh, Na plus gas and Cl minus pun dalam bentuk gas. You akan belajar, you akan pakai ni banyak lagi details nanti dekat dalam chapter 5. Okay, nanti you akan nampak lah lebih detail kot kenapa, apa benda gas-gas ni kan apa maksud dia. Nanti dalam chapter 5 you akan lebih faham lah. Okay, so lattice energy ni apa, apa dia sebenarnya value kat sini Okay, it's a measure of the strength of the ionic bond Okay, so the strength tu kita ada dua factor Ionic size and also ionic charge Now strength tu you tak boleh refer to Na itself or Cl minus itself Sebab dia bond between N, Na dengan Cl You kena tengok antara dua-dua tu Na dengan Cl. MgCl tu between Mg dengan Cl and Cl. Ha, itu dia punya ionic bond. Okay. So factors affecting is uh, ionic size. First ionic size. So ionic size, ingat lagi, you belajar sebelum ni ionic size. As ionic size increases, lattice energy decreases. Can you imagine? Size lagi besar. Lagi besar size but lattice energy decreases. Why? Remember? Uh, you belajar awal-awal untuk radius tu uh, Size ni is actually uh, you ambil radius kan daripada nucleus kepada nucleus So you imagine kalau size tu besar So jarak nucleus kepada nu nucleus dah makin jauh Sebab jarak makin besar kan So bila makin jauh Meaning that traction tu tak kuat So dia mudah nak putus so, That's why lattice energy tu drop, decrease eh Okay, itu in terms of size In terms of charge pula, as ionic charge increases, lattice energy increases. Ha, ni logik lah, you nak compare uh, positive 1 dengan positive 2. Okay, uh, uh, lithium plus dengan beryllium 2 plus. You compare kan, different charge. So, kalau different charge maksudnya lagi tinggi charge dia tu kat situ, for example, <coughs> kita tahu uh, bila dia remove dua elektron for example so attraction tu uh, makin kuat kan dengan nukleus bila makin kuat makin susah lah you nak putuskan uh, ionic bond tu so that's why lattice energy you increases eh ok kita tengok eh dari segi contoh kat sini ni in terms of size tadi let's say lah size kita memang Susah lah nak, nak tengok uh, kalau dia different group. Now kita try dulu tengok dalam uh, similar group. Okay. So let's say lah we have the similar group here. Lithium, Cl, NaCl, KCl and CsCl. So ini maksudnya uh, Cs ni paling bawah. So paling bawah kita tahu size dia lagi besar kan. Uh, ni you kena relate dengan apa you belajar pada chapter 2. So dia lagi besar. So kalau you tengok kat sini lattice energy menurun. Lattice energy you menurun eh. Okay, sebab size tu makin besar. Sebab apa tadi? Ha, ni saya cakap lah. Bila size makin besar, so jarak kat sini. For example, kita let's say lah, kita maintain kan, constant kan uh, ion ion. Now yang berubah adalah group 1 saja, metal group 1. So maksudnya jarak kat sini antara dua ni makin jauh. Oh, pemerah sama pula pemerah. Okay. Sekejap. Hmm. Macam ni kat sini, ni kat sini. Imagine lah jarak kan. Yang ni jarak dia makin jauh. Makin besar makin jauh. So makin jauh uh, jarak antara radius kepada radius. So attraction dengan nucleus pun makin kurang. That's why latent energy you makin drop. 
makin mudah nak putus. Okay, remember eh, latest energy makin rendah, makin mudah nak putus. Okay, in terms of charge, okay, so we know that if you increase the charge, um, <coughs> especially macam anion lah, kita tahu charge dia punya size akan bigger. Okay, walaupun uh, here if you increase, um, okay, kalau cat ion, even though kita increase the charge, size dia kecil. Tapi anion is uh, very obviously besar. Kalau you compare kan, anion dengan cat ion, anion uh, totally lagi besar daripada cat ion. So that's why if you increase the charge, especially bila you tengok pada anion, size akan jadi makin besar. Okay, so kat sini, uh, in this case pula, uh, uh, apa ni? Walaupun uh, you tengok jarak tu makin jauh tapi you tengok sebenarnya jarak dia tak adalah jauh sangat beza. So that's why you tak boleh nak compare in terms of radius from nucleus to nucleus. Now you, you kita lebih biasanya kita compare dari segi attraction between nucleus and also the valence, the, the valence electron lah. The bonding eh. Okay walaupun size tu you nampak uh, macam macam makin besar. Tapi sebenarnya kalau you tengok jarak dia tak adalah jauh sangat. Tapi kat sini dia punya charge bertambah. Okay, here kita tengok in terms of uh, interaction between nucleus ya. Eh? So that's why you tengok kat sini lattice energy are very very large as compared to charge dia kurang satu. Eh sorry. Betul ni? Ini ya. Eh? Okay, kalau kat sini you just ingatlah higher charge for both of course the lattice energy will become uh, lower lah. Because of the attraction ya. Eh? Interaction nucleus between valence electron. Okay, so let's look at this checkpoint. Three, arrange the following ionic compound in order of increasing. Increasing magnitude of lattice. Okay, bila you dapat macam ni, first kali you kena pecahkan. Kalau you tengok size versus charge. Okay. Charge ni dia macam value dia lagi besar. Maksudnya lattice energy dia, dia obviously makin uh, paling besar. So you boleh compare kat sini. Okay. Eh sorry. First ni examine the ionic charge and order by sum of the charges. Macam ni eh. Kita tahu Ca dengan O2 minus. K plus dengan Br minus. K yang ni dengan yang ni. You pecahkan lah. So maksudnya ni positif tu, negatif tu. Positif one, negatif one. Positif one, negatif one. Positif tu, negatif tu eh. Okay. So here kita boleh pisahkan dulu. Between lower charge dengan high charge. That's why tadi saya cakap. Um, size versus charge. Kita tengok ni dulu. Kita compare. Ini obviously paling besar. Okay. That's why yang ni paling besar kat sini. Okay, yang ni paling kecil. So, lepas tu nak compare pula between dia orang ni, between the similar group. Calcium and SR, strontium pun also similar group. KBR, KCL, BR dengan CL pun similar group. So, <coughs> examine in terms of ionic size tadi lah. Sebab similar group, you boleh just tengok by using the um, ionic size. <coughs> okay, so KBR, KCL tadi. BR dengan CL, so BR is lower. Uh, lagi bawah daripada CL in terms of size. Okay. In terms of size. That's why dia higher eh. Ni kita kata higher in terms of size. Okay. And SR pun higher than CA2 plus in terms of size. So bila in terms of size, we know that lagi besar size dia, lattice energy makin rendah. So BR dengan CL, BR lagi besar. So dia paling rendah lah. So KBR followed by KCL. So antara SR dengan CA, CA, SR tadi lagi besar, dia lagi bawah. So that's why LE dia, latest energy lagi rendah. So that's why followed by SRO and lastly is CAO. Okay? Boleh eh? So ni kalau dapat soalan yang combination macam ni, you kena pecah macam tadi eh. You have to uh, make sure you pecahkan in terms of size on charge dulu. So charge, you pilih charge dulu, pisahkan. Ya, pada situ baru you pecahkan balik, turun balik, tengok the in terms of group lah eh. Okay, boleh eh? Clear eh? Okay, so
So uh, now we look at the physical properties of ionic compound. So physical properties, okay, saya so, rasa so ni pun macam ni macam kita selalu hafal je kan. Macam mana kita nak ingat eh. So physical properties ni, uh, of course ionic compound have high melting and also boiling point. Kenapa dia high melting, high boiling point? Because they have the stronger attraction. Lagi tinggi, the stronger the attraction, the larger the lattice energy kan. Makin kuat attraction, biasanya makin kuat, makin kecil lah saya tu kan. The larger the lattice energy, the higher the boiling point. Kalau kat sini nak tengok, if you compare between cesium and sodium. The same group, cesium paling bawah, sodium kat atas. So you tengok lattice energy, uh, sodium lagi tinggi lah. Kan, bila sodium lagi tinggi, uh, dia paling atas, uh, lattice energy paling tinggi. That's why you punya melting and also boiling point pun lagi tinggi. Sebab lagi susah lah nak putuskan kan. Sebab kita cerita lattice energy ni you nak break. Melting point, boiling point ni kan you nak breakkan dia punya attraction tu. Supaya dia boleh bergerak. Daripada solid kepada liquid kepada gas kan. Okay. So arrange in, uh, ionic compound below in order of increasing melting point. So sebenarnya sama je. You nak dapatkan in order of increasing melting point you have to relate by Uh, the lattice energy. Okay. So arrange in order of increasing kan. So again uh, nampak gaya kat sini pun from different group. So apa yang kita perlu buat is okay kat sini KBR has the smallest ionic charge. Dia positive one and negative one. CSL tu positive two negative one. MGF tu positive two negative One. So the smallest ionic charge you total out kat sini dia dua je lah. Yang lain macam you combine tu lebih kurang tiga kan charge dia. So this one has the uh, smallest lah. The, because the, uh, it has the weaker attraction and also the smaller lattice energy. So bila smaller lattice energy that's why dia lower melting point. Okay this one is for KBR. So between these two pula CaCl2 and MgF2. Dua-dua ni berbeza. Ca, Mg, Cl2, F2. Okay. So uh, both have same ionic charge. Kan? Positive to negative one ni positive to negative one. Sama. But Ca has bigger ionic size. So kenapa? Because Ca kat sini below than magnesium. Okay. And Cl juga kebetulan lah. Cl is lower than fluorine. So both tu dia punya size besar. So bila besar, bigger size, again weaker attraction where they have a smaller lattice energy that's lower than melting point. Okay, <coughs> compared to magnesium fluoride lah. Okay, so boleh lah, eh? clear eh? Kalau dapat tak macam ni, that's why you kena separatekan dulu setiap satu lah. Tengok dia group mana, dia uh, compare dulu dari segi group and then dia punya size. Uh, dia punya charge dia eh. Tahu macam you buat untuk lattice energy tadi lah. Okay. Then. Physical properties number two is hard and brittle crystalline solid. Hard and brittle. Tadi apa? High melt, high melting and boiling point. Now the hard and brittle. What's the meaning by hard? Keras lah. Brittle? Brittle ni rapuh. Rapuh meaning dia mudah pecah. Okay. So if ions are displaced from their position, the crystal lattice repulsive forces will occur. Crystal will become unstable and break apart. Okay, ionic solids are brittle. When struck, they shatter. You pecahkan sikit je, dia pecah. Dia terus terpecah macam tu lah. Okay, so actually kalau you tengok kat sini. Okay, nampak tak? Dia bergerak. Saya repeat eh. Let's say lah, you bagi satu external force. You ambil uh, penukul, you ketuk je. Ketuk, dia akan beranjak. Sebab you tak ketuk keseluruhan tempat tu kan. So you ketuk satu for, satu tempat je, dia beranjak. And kalau you tengok kat sini, okay, actually negatif and negatif ni asalnya kita tahu kalau ionic bond kan. Alah kita tahulah negatif kita akan duduk dengan negatif, positif tak akan duduk dengan negatif. So that's why dalam dalam satu ionic compound, susunan dia is positif, negatif, positif, negatif dia akan Uh, alternately, secara alternate, alternately kan, betul susun. But when you give external force, okay, 
dia akan bergerak dan negatif dengan negatif akan berada uh, sama level that's why bila sama level dia akan repel bila repel that's why dia akan pecah okay that's why itu kita explain in terms of why the ionic solid is brittle okay so i hope uh, you are very clear about this eh? <coughs> and then good electrical conductor in molten and echo state of course ionic solid tersusun rapat tadi kan ionic solid dia tersusun rapat you, uh, the electron can move ion dia kat situ je okay so kalau you uh, cairkan dia dalam molten state so molten dia jadi liquid or dissolve in water dia jadi aqueous then dia boleh conduct electricity lah okay And then for solubility, many ionic solids are soluble in water. Okay, due to polar water molecules. So water is a very polar molecules. Nanti saya akan explain in details why water is polar. Nanti ada explanation on this uh, dalam tajuk covalent bond lah. Okay, but ionic dia tak dissolve in organic solvent. Okay, like dissolve like polar, dissolve polar. For example kat sini macam kita nak tunjuk. Dia akan dissolve dengan apa yang dia suka lah. Okay, so in this case, uh, mostly ionic solids are dissolved only in water lah. Dia tak favor organic solvent. Kalau covalent bond, uh, biasanya uh, dia boleh dissolve in organic solvent. Okay, boleh tak? Clear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Saya masuk sikit je lah eh. Okay. So now we move to covalent bond. <coughs> okay. So covalent bond yang banyak eh. Yang you kena tahu. Okay. So uh, ionic tadi tak banyak lah. You just tahu kena transfer daripada Lewis. Transfer elektron. Macam mana you nak draw. Uh, kalau dia ionic bond. Lepas tu apa physical properties dia. And biasanya dia tanya in terms of um, Lattice energy tadi lah, uh, dia punya explanation. Okay, so now for covalent bond, you should be able to explain the formation of covalent bond. Okay, tadi macam you buat untuk ionic, sama juga untuk covalent. And then draw the Lewis structure. Okay, and then calculate the formal charge and predict the most possible Lewis structure. Nanti you akan tahulah macam mana you dapat ada a few pilihan. Okay, then kena pilih pula mana satu yang paling stable. Okay, and then draw Lewis structure of molecule with exception to the octet rule kita, kita tahu kita belajar dia mesti octet kan ha, nanti sebenarnya dalam ni ada je yang tak octet ha, dia maksudnya dia tak lapan sama ada dia kurang lapan atau dia lebih lapan okey itu exception and then formation of coordinate bond using Lewis symbol okey and then draw possible resonance structure akan ada juga belajar resonance and then relate the bond length and bond strength, okay, uh, with respect to single, double and triple bond, okay, dalam ni kita adalah, uh, bila sharing, kita ada double bond, triple bond, I think you, you pun tahulah benda ni kan, okay, and then of course physical properties, are you imagine, tadi you belajar dalam dua je subtopik, dah terus physical properties, ha, now bila you masuk covalent bond, banyak details ni baru last tu you pergi physical properties, yang segala boiling point semua tu lah, okay, So covalent bond beza dengan tadi ionic sharing eh sharing valence pair of electron biasanya sharing tu dia mesti pair maksudnya uh, sini share sini bagi satu so B kena bagi satu so satu dan satu so at least ada dua lah sebab kita tahu maksudnya kalau dia nak buat bond mesti ada at least dua jadi kan Dua ni kena buat bond. Dua elektron represent satu bond. Okay. Satu bond tu. Satu bond maksudnya dua elektron. Okay. You kena faham kat situ lah. So the shared electron uh, will follow the octet rules lah. Okay. Octet rules ni yang maksudnya you nak achieve lapan. Octet ni eh. Ni lapan. Okay. Okay. Okay, ah, kecuali tadi sharing elektron. Okay. Sekejap. Yeah. 
Okey. Sharing elektron 8 kecuali hidrogen. Hidrogen dia tak boleh share sampai 8 ya. Hidrogen ada berapa je? Valence dia, dia ada dua saja. So hidrogen kita dia akan achieve duplet. Ataupun ada certain buku dia panggil duet. Dua lah eh, dua. <coughs> so kalau kita tengok kat sini. First saya nak introduce dulu lah. Okay, so elektron kalau uh, bila kita sharing kan, dia akan ada bonding pairs and also lone pairs. Okay, bila you macam you tengok contoh HCl, dia sharing elektron. Sharing apa? Hydrogen share satu, klorin share satu. Bila share satu, dia dapatlah dua elektron. Dia tengok balik kat sini eh. Hydrogen share satu, klorin share satu. So you akan dapat kat sini, ini yang kita kata hidrogen itu duplet. Uh, sorry eh tadi saya tersilap cakap sebenarnya tadi. Uh, duplet ni bukan sebab hidrogen tu ada dua. Hidrogen tu sebenarnya ada satu. Okay. Uh, sebaik saya perasan. Sebenarnya hidrogen tu ada satu. Dia share satu. Uh, lagi satu akan share oleh yang lain lah. Okay. Uh, macam ni contoh example klorin share dengan dia. So that's why dia tak akan jadi octet. Sebab Valence dia dah habis dah, dah dipakai. Kalau klorin, dia masih boleh jadi oktet sebab, okay, yang dah share tu dua elektron dengan bond lah. Okay, lagi tiga pasang tu, ada enam tu. Ha, enam tu kita panggil dia as lone pairs. Bila kita kata pairs, maksudnya uh, ada three lone pairs. Okay, we have six. Uh, balance uh, untuk valence electron for chlorine but 6 tu sebab kita buat 2, 2, 2 so dia ada 3 lone pairs. So Alain selalu juga tanya lah how many lone pairs for chlorine so you, you can jawab 3 lone pairs lah. Okay kalau bonding pairs only 1 sebab dia buat bond cuma 1. Okay macam for example here macam carbon eh. Carbon kita tahu biasanya dia buat empat bond. So bila ada empat bond, they have four bonds and zero lone pairs. Boron, okay. Boron ni saya tak pergi detail lagi eh. Uh, ni pada exception. Kita tahu dia kena octet kan. Tapi sebenarnya boron ni dia exceptional eh. Dia three bond saja. Dia tak ada lone pairs. Okay, that's why dia tak octet. Okay, nitrogen. Dia octet tapi dia ada three bonds with one lone pair. Okay, three bonds with one lone pair. And then oxygen, two bonds, okay, with two lone pairs. And oxygen, two bonds with two lone pairs. Fluorine, one bond with three lone pairs. Fluorine tak dekat sini eh. One bond, fluorine, one bond with three lone pairs. Okay, yang penting you faham lah eh. Long pass tu apa? Long pass tu maksudnya yang tak buat bond. Dia ada elektron, otak tapi dia tak buat bond. Okay, so kalau ada single covalent bond, maksudnya dia share dua elektron sajalah. Satu dari A, satu dari B. Satu. So itu kita panggil single elektron. Single covalent bond eh. So macam for example, uh, biasanya single untuk fulfill octet. Kecuali hidrogen tadi lah saya cakap dia duplet eh. So macam contoh fluorine, this is single electron. Single covalent bond eh. Okay, water. Okay, H2O, water. Kalau dia double covalent bond, double bond lah sebenarnya. Bila sebenarnya dia share four electron. For example, O2, oksigen eh. O2, you nampak kat sini. Dia ada satu, 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 satu. Dia share satu, kat sini masih single. So yang ini dia akan share juga dengan ini. So that's why nanti dia kumpul kat sini. Dia jadi ada empat elektron sharing. So empat elektron meaning that dia ada dua bond. Okay that's why dia double bond. Double covalent bond eh. And we also have triple bond. Triple covalent bond for example nitrogen. Nitrogen gas. Okay dia triple bond. Sebab dia ada lima, total dia ada lima. So ada tiga kat sini, three share with another three. So ada total ada enam. Six electron share together. Okay, bila six electron actually dia three pairs of electron. So that's why dia dapat triple bond. Okay, boleh clear? Saya rasa saya tak nak continue dah.
Ah dah habis masa dah pun. Sebab lepas ni dia macam tak boleh bagi saya kalau kalau saya stop, saya sambung lagi nanti tak boleh nak continue dah. Okay. So saya stop dulu kat sini. Any question so far? Ada soalan tak? Tak ada eh? Okay. So uh, with that I think uh, kita akan sambung lah. Kita sambung esok eh. So mana yang yang macam apa tak sempat nak download ke apa tadi. You boleh tengok dulu lah video ke apa eh for this topic. Okay so let's be, uh, apa end our session with uh, Tasbih Kifara and Suratul Ahmad. Okay, thank, thank you, you madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, okay. madam. Okay. Thank you, madam. 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 Welcome. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam.